What is up everybody and welcome back to the Brawlhammer channel. We are here today again with an article. We're going to try and run through this um, relatively quickly because I've noticed my article reading times can be taken up to two hours at some points, but hey ho, we're going to crush it. So what we're going to be talking about today is PHP and whether or not it's the best cho choice for long term business. And this article flagged up recently on Reddit and I was like, well, I should probably react to this considering I'm a PHP dev, I use it in basically all of my projects and in general, I think it's one of the best languages that you can use to build modern, nice, clean, good, responsive web applications. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So it starts out, recently I listened to Lex Friedman's podcast of Peter Heater Levels. I probably completely butchered that name. Apologies, Mr. Levels. He talked about his technology stack for building startups, vanilla PHP, jQuery, and SQLite. Alright, this guy's raw dogging it a bit more than even I would. Um, Hyper exciting, but there's no better technology proof than long-term usage by sustainable businesses. The podcast inspired me to write my views about PHP and why it's the best long term. On that, um, the podcast that he did with Lex Freeman, I've not reacted to this because I've I, I seen it, I've seen like um, quotes coming out from it and here, there and everywhere. Uh, I'm aware of Levels projects. Um, he's he's rode the wave quite well on some of the 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 hype in the industry, ironically enough. Um, and just like AI and tools that you can probably do yourself with your own prompts and whatever else, but. Um, he's built an, an nice interface around it and made it work and scale quite easily for lots of customers. He's making money off it. You can't hate the guy. He built something that makes some money. That's all that we're trying to do. So he talked about this hyper-focused approach to learning new skills, yet he's never had the need to learn Angular, React, View, or Next. Hype comes and goes. Do you know this joke? A new JS framework is released every day. It's no joke for a business that runs on it. And this is one of the big problems that we'll have in this industry. People can talk very easily about he's not needed to, to learn these things, but software engineers will. Um, if you're trying to join any kind of organization and you're not doing a sort of self-employed or your own business, it doesn't really matter what it is that you're doing in your own time. Like I've worked for applications that were built on PHP 5.6, I've worked for applications that didn't have frameworks, and I've worked for applications that have frameworks that are so out of their LTS zone at this point, it's a risk. What you have there is someone that built a project getting really wealthy off of the back of that project because it's been really successful, and that's good for them. But if you're a developer that kind of goes around different companies and wants to help them out, um, you want to bring skill, your, your skills and your passion to that specific industry and make a difference, you can't really do that if they're using Vue and you only use Angular. You, you, you get what I mean? Like you kind of have to know everything at the end of the day if you kind of want to go anywhere. It's like maybe a PHP developer wanting to go and join some Microsoft C Sharp role and kind of throw my hands up in the air and go in. Well, you have to accept me because why should I have to learn all these all these other new skills? There's, of course, balances and trade-offs, which I think is what this is talking about. It's the hyper-focused approach to learning to learn new skills. I think it's important, though. I think, I think you can't last in software engineering if you aren't continuously pushing the boat out and learning new things. Um, I was quite against things like um, Vue, React, on the front end for a long time because I, think, I thought it took a lot of the ability for back-end developers especially to iterate on that if they if they could. Um, I've since now came around to that and I've used Vue.js in nearly all of my projects going forward. Um, Streambit.tv was built on Laravel using Laravel Blades so anytime you click the button it would refresh the whole page and you would get a new page load and in any sort of React developments I used jQuery to modify buttons and change behavior and whatever else or do post requests and whatever else. Now everything's done through, through, through Vue to the point where it's a single page application, any navigation happens in the background through Inertia JS, and that's displayed to the user, and they have no idea if there's any, any changes. I have now since moved to an approach using Livewire, Laravel Livewire, Livewire, which I'll probably get into as this article goes on. It's no joke for a business that runs on it, which is true. Um, the main developer that starts that starts your stack has a lot of responsibility to build an application that is going to be maintainable for other developers. Does it make any sense for you as a, as a developer to build a project on the latest Angular on some cake PHP framework that doesn't have any hiring capabilities of it? Probably not. It's probably best to keep things, scale back a little bit, use something like Symfony, use something like Twig. Any developer worth of salt that uses Angular, React, Vue or Next can use those. You know that they can use those. If they're, if they're using React and Vue, they can use Twig templates. It's just HTML at the end of the day. And it's just pulling out data in, a, in, a, in a, a, a different way, which is very easily taught on the first day of the job. If you want, to, if you want someone to use Vue or React, that's going to be a longer learning process, far longer, months, um, years, perhaps. 
Hype driven development. In 2016, a company contacted me to help upgrade their internal CRM. They used Angular 1 and wanted to go to Angular 2. As such, it would require a complete rewrite. I remember this being a big thing with Vue 2 and the migration to Vue 3. There's some, still some plugins to this day. If you're out looking for like a package or something like that for Vue, it might still only be in Vue 2. And your only hope is that someone has forked it or completely rewritten a whole new project for it. Um, sometimes it doesn't exist. It's a shame. Another path was to migrate to React, the Facebook framework and one that. In 2018, Vue became the new competition. It did. Vue stormed onto the scene. Another Vue would require would be required to attract more developers. So in 2018, Vue... I'm just, just trying to read this again here. In 2018, Vue became the new competition. Another rewrite would be required to attract more developers. I assume that means actually getting people that want to work on it, in some sense of the way. <laughs> um, because that is one of the things that people tend to forget about, is that you can write your code, you can write your software in any language that you want. You can put it in C++ or use Django if you want to. Um, but you have to have a hiring pool that can help you maintain it. Otherwise, you'll be the only person working on it forever. Um, Next was Alpine. There's dozens of new tutorials on YouTube on the brand new JS framework. They have 90% feature overlap, but just a slightly different syntax sugar. Pretty much how it works. Um, transitioning from like Vue to React was wasn't too bad. I still prefer the workings of Vue. I think it's far more simpler. Um, but they all pretty much do the same thing at the end of the day. Um, this is great fun for developers to try and learn new shady things, but it's a big problem for business costs. Because you're paying developers to sit and rewrite all day. <laughs> Imagine having a house where you have to replace all of the windows every winter. There are new standards, new dimensions, and a style doesn't even fit the whole building. PHP has a long-term stability that, that, that you can rely on. Now let's examine the same situation from the side bank of the fence. What frameworks are used by the majority of PHP developers? Symfony and Laravel. Symfony 1 was released in 2007 and Laravel 1 was released in 2011. Laravel 1. Jeez, oh. I first started using Laravel, Laravel 4, so I was quite late to it, I think. Or I think a lot of people started to use it about then. Both are time tested, community driven, and most importantly are still being used by business. At least based on a dozen of projects this would help to upgrade. We have one new PHP version released every year with a clear release path ahead. Four minor versions, 8.1, 8.2. I'm currently running I think most of my projects on 8.3 and 8.4. Followed by a new major release of breaking changes, example 9. Wonder if that will be coming out at some point, it'd be good to see. PHP has a pro growth competition. If a market has one big player as a monopoly a monopoly that degrades into stagnation. There's no place for new players of evolution until Apple Linux came along. Microsoft was the only player in the game that dominated with a terrible user experience and extreme license prices. To be fair, I don't think that's necessarily accurate. I think from a business perspective, a lot of companies at that time, you could have used Microsoft, but I think back then IBM was still a thing. So you could still get a machine. Remember them? Like, like, like DOS, you know, Microsoft came in to compete with the bloated and stagnant and terrible user experience of DOS at the time. I might be getting my computer terminology wrong, but I think you get what I mean. There were, there were, there were other players in the industry there, and Microsoft came in to compete. And all that's happened since then is, whenever it's been required, other companies have come in and competed as well. Apple, I think, have been around just as long as Microsoft have, and they've been competing for just as long as well. Like, you can argue one was better or, one, or the other one was better, but they've both been button heads for a long time. And then Linux has just always been there, just dominating in the, in the uh, server spaces. Just the way it's kind of always been. Um, Microsoft, of course, were big at one point in the server space, but they're not as much anymore. I think they still have a stranglehold on things like Azure and AD. I think that's still a thing, but I don't know, it's not too bad. Um, especially with the fact that Microsoft now allows you to integrate things like WSL, so Windows Subsystem for Linux. You can install Ubuntu underneath Windows and have full access to all the Linux tools underneath it. It's quite powerful. It's not a bad thing to have, I don't think. And of course, I don't think that, that would be a thing if there wasn't that active or ongoing competition. It's good. So, on the, other, on, the, on the other hand, if a market has too many players, it's a battlefield where customers are lost in the noise. In such an environment, you can finally find a stable solution and it will soon be replaced by a new, well-funded competitor. And that's a really, really, really good point. Is that if a business tries to make its framework a thing and it's funded by billions, it's hard for it to be shaken away by the community and told to go away like would react be a thing if it wasn't funded by facebook probably not would angular be a thing if it wasn't funded by facebook uh, google probably not at the end of the day when you think about it because view is a google developer that wasn't a fan of working with the way angular did things in a certain way 
who made his own framework and it's community driven now at this point. Um, so I think that's a pretty good example. I think jQuery as well is all community driven. So I don't know, like you can kind of argue that those companies buying their way into that industry and the community does eventually endorse them in some aspect because they all start using it. I think it's, I think it's a really, really good point. Um, like PHP has its competition, but a lot like Laravel lends itself a lot to a lot of the sort of symphony packages that that, that, that exist. They they complement each other in a really really good positive way. In a way, that I don't think JavaScript does, but then JavaScript also has packages, and they all kind of inherit from each other, don't they? PHP is not, we'll, we'll 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 keep going. I've, there's a thought process there. I'm not I'm not entirely sure what it is. Um. PHP is unique. Did you know it's the only programming language of two strong framework players? I'm profoundly grateful that we have such a market. Did you know it's the only programming language with two strong framework players? Let's think about that. JavaScript is the language at the end of the day. It's a programming language. It has strong framework players in terms of React and Vue. I think Angular is still used in terms of older code bases and then some people that do still use it which is fair enough you know it's an interesting statement i don't necessarily know if it's true i guess it's i guess it might be because when you consider javascript also has things like next.js that's also quite big so there are there are stronger framework players front end and back end because javascript can do both whereas php is only back end so it doesn't really make sense to have it does have a lot of frameworks though. Like you can list them for days. It's got things like people code websites using WordPress, you know what I mean? People use things like um Drupal or, or like CMS and stuff like that. Like but they also use it for, for, for other things. Um a framework necessarily? Probably not. But then people do treat WordPress like a framework. Is this it's a hard one. Um Maybe not though. Maybe maybe I'm thinking about it a bit too not what the author's saying. This conversation keeps both Symphony and Laravel working hard to improve and innovate. It also gives customers a choice based on personal feelings or preferences. That might be true. Um, but I think for a lot of people, the opinionated way and the way that, that Symphony does things and Laravel does things is very distinct. Um, so Laravel lends itself to being able to do a lot of more wacky and bold things by going, we have this feature and you're going to use it this way. But a symphony kind of keeps things open a little bit and goes, we have this, you can kind of use it in any way that you kind of want to, or you don't have to use it at all. And then, even then, we probably wouldn't recommend it if you use it anyway. <laughs> it's like, like the data fixtures, for example. I thought that was a really good feature, and then I realised that you're not meant to use it in production, and it was like, well, <laughs> great. Um, but yeah. Which I thought was odd, was odd. Maybe I'm getting that wrong, but ultimately, that, that, that's, that's gives the company's sort foundation that they can build on for a decade. So yeah, I mean, healthy ecosystem. This healthy competition has positive side effects in the community. Both organise a couple of conferences a year. They do, but you can meet great friends and find a job or learn new skills. There's uh, PHP conferences in the UK, and there's even ones in Scotland as well. Um, there's also like meetups and stuff like that that we do every, every, every Thursday. It's pretty cool. If you're working in vanilla PHP, like. Peter, I'm just going to say Peter. There are dozens of conferences a year across Europe, America, Asia, and Australia. The PHP ecosystem did, didn't get stuck on bare websites and browsers. You can build APIs, desktop apps, machine learning, static analysis, and tools that can improve the code for you. It's a full circle. That's very true. Like a lot of people just assume that PHP is a language that was ancient and used to build Facebook 1.0 back in the day, in like 2006 or seven or whenever it was. Um, but it's not, it's came an extremely long way. Like, you can do serverless with it. A lot of people don't even know that. They think it's like this ancient language that needs to be hosted on some XAMPP server in like a basement somewhere, and you need to have hardware for it. It's it's completely changed these days. It's a, it's a totally new thing. self reflecting technology. Last but not least, other languages lack advanced technology. Nikita came to PHP Core in 2014 and brought AST to PHP 7.0. It's not a new PHP feature we can use, but it's made the PHP core code base written in C much more simple to work with. It's a similar jump from moving to from a hard drive to an SSD or from a button phone to a smartphone. The problem is that PHP itself is written in C. Even the best PHP developer cannot code in C at a world language level. If PHP stopped here, it would still be as good as its best C developer. But in parallel, Nikita also could in our tool open up new possibilities to PHP developers. 
the PHP parser. The PHP parser is written in PHP. Its purpose is to simplify static code analysis and minute manipulation. Um, yes, it's still being worked on. Uh, parsing PHP and PHP 7 code into AST. I think what we need to do is figure out what the hell AST is. So AST is abstract syntax, syntax tree. This RFC proposes an introduction of AST as an intermediary structure of a compilation process. This replaced the existing practice of initial opcodes that it was from the parser. I remember this being a thing. I never understood it at, at the time, but I remember everyone was always clamoring about, about this. Decoupling the parser new compilers has to a number of hacks implementation makes the, implement, uh, the implementation more maintainable and understandable in general. Furthermore, it allows implementing implementing syntax that was not feasible with a single pass compilation process. So I think this is in general what led to the big performance improvements that came with PHP seven. If I'm not correct, if I'm not wrong there, the abstract syntax tree has a little impact on maintained performance or memory usage. Where AST does those to do it slightly better and smaller instruction sequences, like for each loops, the practical impact is not worth mentioning. So it doesn't actually. It's not. I'm talking absolute rubbish. The introduction of AST does impact the performance and memory use of the compilation process itself. This is only relevant with no opcode caches in use if opcode caches are used to no, no ones. Okay. So if, if you have no one opcode cache, then this doesn't really matter. Let's use the measure for lines. Yeah, okay. To summarize the results, the AST based implementation is 10 to 15% faster, but needs more memory. The amount of additional memory heavily depends on the size of, 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 of the file. A small file needs additional 10% memory, whereas a very large file needs 70%. So what we're talking about here is the fact that PHP is always kind of reflecting in on itself and trying to improve and trying to do things in a better way. I think a lot of people were aware of the performance issues that came with PHP, and that's why a lot of people end up leaving, left their ship. I think came came from static types and generics and doing things a different way, and I think enums at some point. Like, um, I would agree with that. PHP has kind of always been sort of trying to improve to some degree. Um, whether or not it has or not is kind of a thing depending on whether or not you last talked to PHP. Um, if it does, a, if it doesn't do a certain thing the way that you want it to do it, it's a good chance it's probably like a what do you call it? One of these um, RFCs developed for it. They just need someone to back it, I guess. Imagine an AI that can be as smart to improve itself or robotics is advanced to build better versions of themselves. I call this self-reflection technology. It's an evolutionary level where a programming language can improve itself. PHP is unique in this matter. Okay, I'd like to see why it is then. JavaScript has few tools but are inconsistent because of the many language dialects. In the PHP community, we have PHP Stan, a tool that can find bugs in your code without running it. Is there a new bug in your project that we missed? Add a new PHP Stan rule and it will never happen again. Never. It's a read-only tool like the GPTs we have now. It doesn't work for us, but it's helpful anymore when we ask for help. We also have Rector, which I actually used recently to move a Symfony project from 5.4 to 6. Um, a lot of the database indexes and columns and whatever else were done in annotations and had to be changed to attributes, which Rector solved in minutes rather than me having to do it over the span of weeks. Um, so it was a fantastic tool. But I'm surprised that that doesn't exist in JavaScript. But am I surprised? When I was using React, um, it dawned on me about how bad the ecosystem was in general for like tool chains. So if I wanted to build database migrations and have models and stuff like that, there, just, there wasn't anything close to what we have with like doctrine and entities and getters and setters, the way that, that, that you can do it for that. And I understand not everyone likes them, but it really wasn't a, a nice experience, at least from my like foray into it. It surprises me that these things don't exist, but they have things like like uh, JS hint and stuff like that. Do they not? Like you have to like do your JavaScript in a certain way. You have like what what about the uh, linter? Is that not a thing? Uh, JS lint. So JavaScript has JS lint, the JavaScript and quality tool. Is that not the uh, same thing that this author's talking about? Like the linter would find bugs in your code without running it, would it not? Rector, though, I don't think exists for JavaScript. Um, I wonder who the author was for this Vector blog post because it says um, when I started working on Vector in 2016 I noticed other languages have similar tools yet the focus was rather dialect based than single lined. The JavaScript ecosystem is rich but also has too many variations. Almost word to word exactly what the other author was talking about. So that was Thomas. This was written by Ironically this was also written by Thomas. 
Thomas Watt River. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I've got a bit of a bias here that I've noticed, and that the person that writes blog posts for Rector also writes it writes this 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 blog post that I'm reading out just now. So then I've went away to try and source um well this this sort of um this thought process is coming from. I've yeah, I've came across him saying the same thing back in twenty twenty two, so he still has the same opinion. So yeah, it's interesting. I don't know if I necessarily agree with it, that's the thing. Like um I think these tools could exist, it just needs someone to go and build them, I guess. Um The problem is is that if you have a rector, it won't work. If you have a JavaScript rector that works for Vue, it won't work for React. But if you have a vector, I guess that's a good point. The the JavaScript code that you're writing isn't the same as the PHP code, right? So the way that you would get states, for example, in Vue and React is different. But in PHP, it's probably going to be the same. But then if you integrate with like certain Laravel features, you're going to have to have a specific vector rule for that that won't be activated on a Symfony project and vice versa. So I get it, but I also kind of don't um, at the same time. So yeah, I think there's a, there's, there's a little bit of a rights for vector bias coming through in this article, which I never realised until now. Um, so what's a vector tool that can improve on an code? And um, most importantly, they can use the best current knowledge. Has someone in India come up with a better way to write a controller in PHP 9? They can create a rector rule that anyone in the world can use without any knowledge about controllers or PHP 9. Which is true, but you have to remember, if that rule only works for the way Laravel does controllers rather than the way Symfony does controllers, now I'm not saying that they're different, but they might, they might be, then you'll need two different rules, which is kind of what we're saying about JavaScript. And that it's two spread out and bespoke but if you had cake php or any other code igniter we have other frameworks that exist so saying it's symphony or laravel isn't accurate because there are other ones and these things won't work for other for other, for other people all, all other languages i know of are still stuck in the read-only phase the new features of languages are spread via articles videos or conference talks there is no tool you could run from your CI to convert your Python 2 project to Python 3. However, there is a tool you can run to convert your PHP 5.2 project to 5.4. In the case of vanilla PHP, this can be done a single day and is fully automated. But that's not true though. Is he, like, I understand he writes for Rector, but has he ever tried to do this? I've done this with projects going from Symfony 5.6 to 6. That's only one major version. We're not talking about 5.2 PHP to 8.4. I trust, trust me, if I, there's no tool that, I'm just trying to figure out if I'm going to speak out, out of turn here. Like, there is a tool, you, but you'd have to write all the rules for it yourself. If I was trying to go from the, an old code in version to a new one, and it was using 5.6 code, I wanted to be on 8.4, Rector wouldn't get all of it. It wouldn't understand all of my use cases, and even then, when I used it for something simple, which I think is simple, which is Converting annotations into attributes, it messed up around 20 of my entity relationships, and I had to go back through and manually fix them when they were raised in the doctrine error log. And then on some of them, when I had traits inherited on entities, so which defined things like UUIDs and created that columns, which I think is quite a standard way of, of doing things, at least it was when I took over the DA project. Um, it didn't understand that that was a database column or anything like that. It, so what I had was, like, some database tables were half annotations and half not. And in some cases, it kind of just missed it completely. and just didn't convert it at all. So it helped get the bulk of it, like 80 to 90% of the code. It got that. But then the little things, I then had to go in and manually fix, which you could argue still saved me time. But at the end of the day, it's not as done in a single day and fully automated as, as this guy's saying it is. It simply isn't. And that's someone with real experience in, in, in working with this. And it's kind of surprising him saying this, but I'm guessing he's just, again, trying to sell Rector. Um, and that's why PHP is the best choice for long-term business costs. I don't think that has anything to do with it whatsoever. I think your hiring pool has to... Right, so your hiring pool has to have developers in it that actually want to work on the projects. And if developers don't want to work on PHP then using PHP for your long-term business is not appropriate. 
Um, what, what, what we're seeing just now is an influx of PHP developers and salaries being driven to the, to, to the bottom. That's just the way the industry seems to be going. Um, like I've I've seen PHP jobs advertising things for twenty eight k, and it blows my mind that people even accept roles like that because they do, and the job goes away. So someone must have taken it. Um, certainly, it's it's quite an easy language to sort of get into, um, which I think kind of leads to those sort of low salary drive downs. Like everyone always mocks PHP for how it looks, and there's a reason for that. It's because people think it looks too easy and it's too easy to get into. You know, if you were trying to compare yourself to like a C++ game engineer dev, um, PHP is a far easier language to learn, although in some aspects of it you might be getting paid more than the C++ game engine dev, which is mind-boggling to think about. One thing I wanted to bring up was some code actually that I wanted to kind of contrast and compare to. One of the reasons why I think this article doesn't, doesn't touch on this so let's just finish this article first. The open source adaptation to the future. I'm not saying PHP has the best syntax, genetic supports, or CPU level speed. It's about the whole package that the business builds upon. And I think that's true. I think if you are a business trying to get out there and just build a project, it's one of the best languages you can do it for because it's quick, it's easy to get proof of proof of concepts, get, get set up, and you can very quickly refactor and change things if you feel that you need to for purposes of scale or something like that. All the PHP tools I mentioned are open source and not under commercial or benevolent dictatorship. If something changes, it will and can adapt. I mean, yeah, that's true. So I agree with Peter and his vanilla PHP stats, not a bit of language, but the ecosystem around it. And PHP is the best for long term business costs. Happy coding. I think there's more to it. Long term business costs is it's interesting. I, I, I think we started at the end of the article PHP is the best choice for long term business, and then it quickly shifted into being about costs. And that's not a bad thing, but I think there's more to it than just the necessary costs. Um, a business, as I said before, in regards to PHP salaries, you can get a lot of developers for the price of a couple of like React, Next.js devs. Uh, I, I swear the salary gap does seem to be quite large between the two, and especially something like C-sharp as well. But C-sharp seems to pay a little bit more than PHP does, but then... Are you going to be getting the best developers when other jobs are paying bigger salaries? I would argue probably not, unfortunately. Unless you're me, of course. Um, in which case, I love PHP, so we're getting the best. But what I wanted to do was bring up two different projects I've been doing just now. So, the first one is my Streambit project. Very simply, when I started out this project back in... God, when was it? First came out would have been, what, 2017? Something like that? Was it 2017? See, when they're first one a PHP unit, we'll, 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 we'll use that as a as a metric. 2018. So that's when this project was first committed to. So this is now going on over six years, just say. Um, and it's been through every version of PHP since then. So 2018 probably started out in Laravel 5 to some to some degree, maybe Laravel 7, um, something like that. And it's been through the whole rigmarole, if you know what I mean. I've used views and I've had things written in views. I've included things like controllers where it gets things like the sidebar information and it does off checks here and then returns a view. I've done I've coded things that badly. Alright? Things have been that bad. But what I've also done is also converted it to something like Vue.js, where I now use inertia, where I can now render out content in a single page application using Vue, and it all works in the one package. Now, most people would say refactoring or something like this is probably quite pointless, but in my case, um, I was using sort of old-style blade templates and Livewire wasn't a thing at the time. Well, wasn't mature or something that I really wanted to use or understand. I was like, blade templates are rubbish, legacy, let's move on to Vue. And I've done that, and I think it actually works quite well. It's a really good project. Um, it was great for learning view. I've got nearly everything transitioned over. So that's the thing. The good thing about having something like PHP is you can run these two things concurrently. So in your router, you can like have a sort of slash about route and have it pass in these these blades. But then if you all, if you want to run inertia, then you just go into your your you know web.php 
I have one. Yes. And you just have it, you know, show and render out inertia instead. Oh wait, this is um a video route, so let's go back. This is a reporting route. This is wrong. Um go for example you can go into your terminal service or whatever else and you can see here rather than rather than the controllers returning views blades they're now returning inertias um so the the the, the, the sort of inertia handler for rendering out the view templates and stuff like that and the good thing is inertia will kind of handle that in the sort of background for you so you don't need to actually think about it and that's something i think that's quite unique about php is you can take something like this which is an old style project built on PHP 7, 2018, something quite old, and it's been upgraded through the years to now running above PHP 7.4 or equal to, and I think it now runs on Laravel 11. So that's now running the latest Laravel framework. Everything about it's latest. And upgrading this hasn't been that much other than looking at the upgrade guide, and it says this might take 50 minutes to change over, and it probably takes about two. It's probably, it's probably, it's probably, it's probably taking me in total an hour to migrate this project from PHP 7.4 to PHP 8.3 on Laravel 11. And that is crazy. I think that's absolutely crazy. If you try to tell a Vue 2 developer that it would only take 15 minutes to move from Vue 2 to Vue 3, they would bite your hand off. I'm not even kidding. Like, the fundamental changes that happened between those two were immense. Um, and it's why we still have packages to this day that aren't upgraded yet, um, which is kind of crazy. So this has also been through, again, all, all the sort of rigmarole we've had Docker put into it. It's had serverless in it at some point. I think there's a GitHub thing in here for the CI. Absolutely everything. Like, it's had everything in it. And when you now compare this to another project I've been doing called Social App, this now runs, it's again, it's, it's another Laravel app, but I've been doing one of these in Next.js, and I just I just didn't like working with it, with, 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 with Prisma or react i'm not a fan of react i like nuxt nuxt was all right i can't complain about about nuxt but this one is actually using the same blade templates but it's now using livewire where it now kind of works similar to how the layouts and stuff like that work in react where you can have your sort of main layout like an alert or for example i have a, I have a, a contained body here and it just basically allows you to put in a header and have your devs and whatever else and then whenever you render out um, that post list or whatever. So sorry, layouts is when you can have like a, a kind of layout for other, every, every, every single page. So for example, my app.blade, so you've got your navigation bar in here, your body, um, your title, your sort of meta characteristics, that's all in here. And this applies automatically to like every live wire page unless you actually define it in here. Um, and you can also have like other layouts and components and stuff like that, that you want. So for example, I want to have a slot in here, which you can have, again, that's standard in Vue and React. Um, and then you can have a sort of communities which encompasses this and then you have your kind of standard code in here that is specific to this page and then when you are actually like flicking through and going through things it's all kind of single page based as well so if i look at my local host just now you can see just now when i'm clicking through this it's instant it goes quick as anything and this is on php guys this like everyone always says like oh php doesn't can't do things like this, but it can. And if you look at the network stack, it's, you can see here where it's calling things. So let me just go to the sort of fetch request. So it goes to communities. So create a community, it goes to this route. You see here, and in the request, it's just coming back with what needs to be populated. That's it, and, I, and I, I'm not like preserving logs or anything here. This is all in like the sort of same single page. There's no refreshes happening here. Um, you can go to create a community, you can go into the community, you can go to create a post. And you can see it, it's just coming back. And everything here is server-side rendered. I see that that is the most important thing. Everything here is all server-side rendered, which is where we seem to be going back with... Um, we seem to be going back that way anyway with, with um, JS frameworks these days now anyway. So, yeah, I think what I've showed you there is that in terms of sort of long-term business, if I've had a project since 2018, um, and I, I, I understand some projects have lasted longer, it's been built on Laravel and uh, an earlier version, Laravel 5, Laravel 6, and I've managed to keep and maintain it through all the sort of scuffles and changes in hype. Like, I've used that as a testing ground for my foray of skills into view and how you can do things differently with controllers and web routes and whatever else, and it just works. That's the thing with PHP. It just works. 
it's like a Soviet tank <laughs> in, in, in certain aspects, but it's like got like a modernized Sherman engine on the back of it. Um, it's it's it it, it kind of just works that way. Um, it's always it's always fun to work with, it. and I think if you are a sort of GS developer and you're you're kind of curious about it, but the project that I just showed you there, it wouldn't be a bad idea getting yourself involved in it and seeing what it's all about. Um, especially because if you want sort of reactivity, you can have that. But with the most stable backend of PHP, it's definitely something that everyone should look into to see if it's for them. Because JavaScript is a very easy language to get into, and sometimes it can be a little bit scary in branching out and seeing what other languages work for you. But PHP is one that I think would help engage you through that. Like the the documentation is always out there, like as well with a lot of these like new JavaScript frameworks, they're not in any of the sort of AI LLMs yet, so. If you ever kind of want help when you ask an AI, you ask ChatGPT, as as developers do, we need help sometimes. Um, so a great example of this is the recent React changes. So when they brought in sort of server side components, when I was asking the AI for help on that, it didn't recognize that that, that, that was a thing that was added in. So you're kind of stuck. Whereas when it comes to PHP, you could argue, yeah, it wouldn't know something about 8.4 is coming out or anything like that. But because the way you do things in PHP is kind of standard and has already been sort of set in place, it knows all those things. PHP, you can only kind of do things in one way, it's all going to be sort of server-sided. So all that logic and the core architecture is already learned, it's already all out there, it's already on Stack Overflow. So if you have a problem, nine times out of ten, it's already been talked about, it's already been written about, and there'll be an issues logger for it. Which I think, in the long-term aspects of running a business, matters more. Um, More than just, you know... um upgrading your PHP stack using Rector or something like that. It's 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 more than that. It's an ease of any developer to pick up PHP, kind of understand what it's trying to do and carry that forward. And yeah, you can get some developers that will come in, not understand PHP and write bad code, but most people will be able to maintain that and work on top of that. Most people. Um and then <laughs> I guess if you have problems with that you can use Rector to rectify any problems that might come up if that's a if if that is even a rule. Maybe it is, maybe maybe it isn't. So I hope you've enjoyed this article. I know I have. I I think it's an interesting um take on it. I, I wasn't expecting him to go down the rector sort of PHP stand route, but now it makes sense that I found his blog posts from twenty twenty two talking about how JavaScript doesn't have um anything like this in it. Those variations are easily spread, burn out in a few years and they're hard to get rid of or change. You could say the same about the numerous PHP frameworks that exist. I mean a new GS framework has just been released during writing these answers, there is no React.js to Angular migration tool, nor a 2 to 4 upgrade. Fun fact, I was hard once that too. Right, but could you not write it? I feel like you could write it. I feel like you could write anything if you really wanted to. The PHP, like, who wants to upgrade Angular 2 to 4 though? They probably just rather just remake the whole project in another front end, which is probably a conversation to have about developer methodology and way they're they're, they're 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 building these things it's 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 i don't think that's necessarily use php in your life would probably be all right like if they didn't want to upgrade php 7.4 to 8.4 maybe they would just delete that as well like we don't know like some developers do do that they go huh, i don't want to work in php anymore i'll just build a fucking c sharp blazer server instead like all right uh the PHP is very consistent as matter. There's PHP 5.4, 5.5, 5.6. There's no 5.6 to be only with this feature of brand syntax. This means the language is deterministic. Every version has strictly defined behavior. You can do an A to B upgrade with a computer algorithm. There's no better language than PHP to spark these automation tools. Where a code assigned static analyzers or rector, there are already discussions on Reddit that the rector should become part of the PHP official RFCs. They're turning their own horn there a little bit. Um, if Reddit says it, then it has to happen. I think it's interesting. There's no better language than PHP to spark these automated tools. I don't know if that's necessarily true. Like, JavaScript has RFCs and stuff like that as well. Like JavaScript at its core is a language. So it has to be done a certain way. And you can kind of account for all the scenarios in which way something will be built, will be sort of built. Um, maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe I just don't have enough experience. I, I think it's it could be quite flippant to just kind of, you know, hand wave away a language or say something can't be done. The community can usually get it done if they try hard enough. It would be fantastic. Imagine there's an RFC that adds a new read-only keyboard to the class. The implementation and tests are part of the RFC already. Now there will be a rect upgrade set to this on top of the top of thousand packages. 
There is no it will be so hard to upgrade. Don't give us more work, please. Discussion is zero work for us developers to upgrade. We just want to compose an update. There is no it will be so hard for us to upgrade. Don't give us more work, please. Discussion is zero work for us developers to upgrade. We just want to compose an update and everyone enjoys the new PHP version without effort. I mean, that's not strictly true, is it? I think that's a bit far. I think that smiley face is doing some heavy lifting there. Um... Yeah, whenever a composer update comes in and it now requires something that now depends on something else, by the way, that thing now needs to be upgraded. Like, yeah, I, I can say I, I, I would run out of hands for the amount of times I've tried to just do a composer update and it's just worked. Anyway, guys, that's it for me. I spoke a lot about PHP just now. I think I'm getting PHP on the brain. Um, overall, PHP is good. I recommend you actually go out there and learn that. I think a lot of people are far too flippant about it and they don't give it enough respect to themselves. Like, it still runs a majority of the of, of, of the internet. It's a meme at this point that PHP caches in Lambos. I don't think it does. And the day. I think PHP wages are still quite low compared to everything else. And that shows in things like the Stack Overflow Development Survey. Um, could do better in this aspect. But at the end of the day, overall, decent article. A um, little bit of bias, but all right. So that's it for me. Have a good one. And if you like seeing articles like this, let me know. And if, by the way, if you want me to like, like look into this Peter Levels podcast. Let me know because I probably could give some takes on it that'd be quite heated. I've seen some things coming out from it, and I probably just get angry at it. Um, I don't want to, but I I, I think yeah, we'll leave it there. If you want to see that, let me know, and I'll do it. Have a good one, guys. See ya.